What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. After a brief hiatus for the holidays, Apple is set to release some new software this coming week and in this episode we're going to talk about that new software along with iOS 16.2 and iOS 16.3 beta 1 and how those software versions have been running. And then after covering the software side of things, we're going to discuss some major developments for the Apple AR VR headsets, a cheaper pair of AirPods coming later this year, why the iPhone SE 4 has been canceled, Fortnite coming back to iOS, AirTags catching a major airline in a major lie, and much more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so let's start by talking about iOS 16.2, which is the latest public release. And so far, this software is running great. I mean, I really have no complaints with the software aside from the home application. So the home application, I mentioned this in my previous Apple Weekly episode, but of course, Apple did remove the home architecture upgrade, which was a pretty big, you know, differentiator for all HomeKit devices it made them faster more responsive you know everything like that but it did break the home application for several people including myself as you can see here all of my airpods still say configuring except for this one right here so you can see a lot of configuring here and i'm not able to tap on that to do anything and you'll just see this up top where it says home pod is being configured additional settings will be available shortly and you can do nothing down here you can't do your alarms your timers any of that so this of course has been a major issue which is why apple pulled it from ios 16.2 but of course you cannot revert back to you know not install this so i'm still facing these issues with the home application which is why i would expect to see a 16.2.1 as soon as possible, really as likely as this coming week, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But aside from that, I don't really have any major issues with iOS 16.2. Now I was also able to see the live activities working. You can see that the car moved a little bit on my lock screen while in an Uber. So this is actually working well. It's my first hand experience with live activities via Uber. I was out at CES and I was using it pretty much every single day, multiple times a day. Now I did also try this with Uber Eats, but for whatever reason, Uber Eats is still not supporting live activities at the moment, even though they do have the toggle and settings. Now I did also want to talk about iCloud Private Relay because I did notice that this has gotten much better with iOS 16.2. Not only is it more consistent, but I also noticed that internet speeds don't drag when using Private Relay. So I just used this while out in Vegas for the first time on 16.2, really the first time since like iOS 16.0.1 or something like that. I haven't used iCloud Private Relay in a while, but I did notice a nice improvement here in 16.2 in terms of reliability and speeds. And then one of the new features here in 16.2 is when you turn off Private Relay, we have the option to turn it off until tomorrow instead of just turning it off completely. So that is nice to have if you only want to turn it off for just one day, you can do that and you can see we have a little notification down there that says it will automatically turn back on tomorrow. And then in the shortcuts application, we have a ton of new shortcuts and kind of tweaks to different shortcuts in 16.2, including all of these have been added for books. Previously, it was only the documents right here to add PDF to books. So you have all of those. We also have some changes to the edit and find calendar events. We have a change to the speak text reliability, the set part car no longer presumes that you're in your car with your car. We just have a lot of changes to shortcuts as well in 16.2. I've honestly not used any of the new actions, but they are there if you are into shortcuts like I am. Now, if you were a fan of Fortnite on iOS or iPad OS, it might actually be returning to the iPhone and iPad later this year, according to Epic's CEO, who tweeted this out on Twitter. Now, one thing I will say, I've seen a lot of people talking about this, and I think it's honestly pretty unlikely for this to be through the App Store itself because Epic and Apple are still in the middle of a major lawsuit. And of course, Epic is just simply not a fan of Apple or the App Store at all. So I highly, highly doubt that the Fortnite application is just gonna be thrown back into the App Store. I think that the more likely scenario here is that there's going to be an Epic iOS App Store for sideloading because, you know, obviously the Digital Markets Act will force Apple to allow third-party app marketplaces to exist on the iPhone and iPad, and that's gonna be their way of getting 
Fortnite back onto those iOS and iPadOS devices. So if you are a Fortnite fan, you know, you can be happy to see that that's going to be coming most likely later this year, unless there's some type of clause in the lawsuit or something like that, we should see Fortnite back on iPhone and iPad soon. And then as far as bugs go, I have had a few minor UI bugs on iOS 16.2. Like this one just happened earlier today. You could see I have a blank now playing platter right here for no reason. I didn't connect my AirPods or anything like that. I've seen this before when I connect my AirPods, it actually usually shows some type of album artwork, but this just randomly popped up on me earlier and would not go away. So that's a pretty strange bug I've had there. I've also had that same type of bug with notifications where they're just kind of empty, just an empty notification that you cannot clear. So I haven't had that recently, but I have had that on iOS 16.2 as well. And then there is also the big issue where the volume controls just simply do not work while in a phone call or FaceTime call. That has been an ongoing issue for a while now. Hopefully Apple does fix that soon, but that is still remaining in 16.2 and in 16.3 beta one. Now, speaking of iOS 16.3 beta one, that's actually what I'm running right here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And there's not much to say about 16.3 beta one. I mean, this beta was mainly pushed to test the physical security key feature. That's a feature that is going to require quite a bit of beta testing. And so Apple did push that out late last year. And of course, that's really the only thing that we've seen change so far in this first beta. However, we should see more changes in the coming betas. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next week, we should see iOS 16.3 beta 2. That really could come any day after Tuesday. I could see Tuesday or Wednesday, the 10th or the 11th for 16.3 beta 2. Now, iOS 16.2.1 could also be released next week. Now, normally I would not say that it would come on the second week, but since we do have the issue with the home architecture upgrade, since Apple pulled that from the 16.2 updates, I could see them pushing that out next week as well. So next week could be a beta and a public release week. So if we don't get 16.2.1 next week, I would guess that that would come on the week of the 16th. I really cannot wait, or I really cannot see Apple waiting any longer than the week of the 16th to push out a double point update for 16.2. And then as far as iOS 16.3, the final release for that, we're still a ways away from that. I cannot see that coming until probably late February, if not early March. So if you're waiting on 16.3, you know, if you're beta testing it right now, you may want to just get off the beta if you're, you know, thinking it's going to come out soon because we are still, I would say at least a month, a month and a half away from that. All right. So now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start by talking about Air AirPods Lite, a cheaper AirPods model that could be launching later this year. And this comes from analyst Jeff Poo, who claims Apple has been working on AirPods Lite to compete with cheaper wireless earbuds on the market. But that's about the extent of what he said. We didn't really get any additional details or any type of pricing, although we can assume that these will cost less than the AirPods 2, which are $129. So I'm thinking the AirPods Lite are probably going to be a $99 pair of AirPods. It could even be cheaper than that. We'll see. But you know, time will tell. We should hear a lot more about these cheaper end AirPods in the coming months. Now, Poo also gave us some insight on the next generation Apple Watch Ultra, saying that it's expected to have a micro LED display when it launches in 2024. He reports that a new high-end Apple Watch will likely adopt a larger 2.1 inch micro LED display measured diagonally, which would allow for increased brightness compared to current Apple Watch models with OLED displays. And I cannot even imagine something brighter than the current Apple Watch Ultra. So that should be very interesting to see. And then the same analyst also just reported that the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max will be constructed of titanium and will have solid state buttons with haptic feedback. Now, those rumors are nothing new. We've heard that before. But now that Jeff Pooh also reiterated the exact same thing as like two other analysts, that does seem to be likely that we're going to have a titanium, you know, build on the 15 Pro and those solid state buttons buttons with haptic feedback. Now, he also says that the 15 Pro models will have the A17 Bionic chip with eight gigabytes of RAM, while the regular 15 and 15 Plus will have the A16 Bionic chip and six gigabytes of RAM. Now, all four models are set to have a USB-C port and Qualcomm's Snapdragon X70 modem for 5G and LTE. And as for the camera, who expects the telephoto lens on the 15 Pro Max to have the Periscope technology for increased optical zoom and the regular 15 and 15 plus will get the 48 megapixel rear camera that the 14 pro models got 
this past year. Now, we also just recently got several new details about Apple's upcoming AR VR headsets, courtesy of the information. Here's what they mention in their latest report. A waist-mounted battery connected via a magnetic MagSafe-like power cable to the headset's headband. One battery charge lasts no longer than two hours, but users can swap the battery out for longer sessions. A design that uses aluminum, glass, and carbon fiber to reduce its size and weight Cameras are largely concealed for aesthetic reasons, so you're not going to be able to see the cameras from the outside. A small digital crown-like dial, like on the Apple Watch, on its right side that enables users to quickly transition between the virtual and physical world. Unlike the Apple Watch, it will not offer haptic feedback. Apple has developed different headbands, including one for consumers made of a similar material to Apple Watch sport bands, with built-in speakers and one targeted at developers. Magnetically attachable custom prescription lenses for glasses wearers, small motors to automatically adjust its internal lenses, a 120 degree field of view, the H2 chip for ultra low latency connection with the second generation AirPods Pro and future AirPods models, two chips, including a main SOC, including a CPU, GPU, and memory, and a dedicated image signal processor. And then the final thing they mention is the ability to run existing iOS apps in 2D. So that is a massive list of oddly specific rumors about Apple's upcoming AR VR headset. And since those are so specific I would not doubt anything mentioned in that report those are all most likely currently in testing right now and honestly most likely to make the final release but of course time will tell that is really our biggest look our biggest you know leak drop for Apple's AR VR headset yet now Ming Chi Kuo also gave us his input on this headset and when it might be launching he said this on Twitter Apple's headset development is behind schedule due to issues with mechanical component drop testing and the availability of software development tools, meaning that mass shipment of this device may postpone from the original Q2 to the end of Q2 or Q3 of this year. As a result, it's increasingly unlikely that Apple will hold a media event for the new device in January. At this point, it seems more likely that Apple will announce the headset at a spring event or the Worldwide Developers Conference based on the current development progress. So as I mentioned a couple of months ago, don't expect anything in January. I highly doubt that we're going to have an Apple event in January. We're looking at a spring event for the unveiling at the very earliest but it should most definitely be out in 2023, especially for the Worldwide Developers Conference. Apple is most definitely going to want to talk about, you know, how to develop apps for this headset. And then speaking of Ming-Chi Kuo, he also just confirmed that Apple has decided to cancel the iPhone SE 4. So he did previously state that it would be either postponed or canceled. And now, according to his recent Medium post, he mentions that Apple has informed suppliers that it has canceled plans to release this phone in 2024. This, of course, due to the economic situation, the looming recession, and pretty much everything else that every other company is going through right now. Now, what's interesting here is that Apple was planning to use its first in-house 5G chip in this iPhone SE 4, but now that it has been canceled, Quo says that it's likely that Apple will continue to rely on Qualcomm for 5G chips in 2024. So that does include the iPhone 16 series will be using those Qualcomm 5G chips. And then finally, we need to talk about how AirTags exposed an airline for lying about customers lost luggage. Here's what a woman said recently in a very viral Twitter thread. I'd just like everyone to know that United has lost track of my bag and is lying about it. My AirTag shows that it has been sitting in a residential apartment complex for over a day. Out back by the dumpsters, I found other emptied United Airlines bags. And in this thread, she tweeted for multiple days about how the luggage was going to stores like McDonald's and then back to the apartment complex, all while the airline insisted that the luggage was safe and at the delivery services distribution center. Now, she did eventually get her luggage back after getting a pretty sketchy text that actually shows it was edited, you know, so she had a number to call in that text message and then after calling it an employee of that distribution center did give her her luggage back so if you still do not have air tags in your luggage by now it's time to change that i mean the air tags are cheap and they will definitely save you in a case of lost luggage or stolen luggage and it's not even just luggage i mean if you have a backpack a laptop bag pretty much anything you're worried about getting lost or stolen throw an air tag in there it is so 
worth it. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16.2 and 16.3 beta one. And by the way, if you were wondering about why I didn't post a video for a full week, you know, last week, it's because I did just decide to take a little mini break for the holidays. I really needed it. I had not, you know, done that for a full four years. So it's been four years since I didn't post a single video in a week. And it felt great to actually have that time off, you know, spend with family and loved ones. So that was nice. Also, I did just recently hit 1 million subscribers i'm currently you know like 200 subscribers off but so by the time that you see this video i will have 1 million subscribers that is an amazing feeling it does not feel real whatsoever i never thought i would get to this place but uh it's, it's all thanks to you guys so i really really appreciate you guys for allowing me to hit 1 million subscribers i will have a separate video on that you know unboxing the play button and things like that i'll have a special video maybe another montage or something like i did for the 100k video but yeah i just cannot thank you guys enough for allowing me to do what I love. And I really appreciate that you guys appreciate the type of videos I bring to you, especially this Apple Weekly episode or this Apple Weekly series. It's just so fun for me to make. And I think it kind of shows through and that's why you guys enjoy these videos as well. But anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more videos and episodes just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.